So hello everyone. So I'm talking about um, Notion um, and really what this evening is going to be is, is an overview. It's quite a big thing. So it's not something that we can go through in kind of fine detail. Um, but hopefully you'll, you'll end this evening with at least an idea of what it is and how it can be useful for you. Um, uh, and it's useful for everyone. There's no one that, that wouldn't benefit from using it. Um, it's a completely free platform, unless there's some of the advanced features that you want to use. Um, I just wonder if anyone could let me know, either in the chat or putting their hand up, that if they've used it or heard of it before. Anybody? Yeah, well, you, Naples, you, Naples board uses it uh, for communication. So, yeah, um, I use it, but simply. Mm. OK, so I'll go through. So what I'm going to do is this one is not going to be so much a presentation as more of a demo. Um, and then I've got a couple of videos. Uh, oh, yeah, Peter says he uses it too. Um, uh, so I've got a couple of short videos just to watch from Notion. And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll kind of just do a demonstration through the basics and then kind of field questions at the end. Um, so let's begin. Um, open this, share, and share. So you should be seeing my presentation now, is that correct? Yes. All good. Okay. I had a couple of comments about the sound being very echoey. Oh, am I echoing for you, Mike? Um, it's still soft. Oh, I'm not sure what I can do about that, I'm afraid. <laughs> Okay, we'll um, we'll just concentrate hard. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, if anyone needs me to repeat anything, um, let me know, and, and I'll do that. Um, so, yes, I think most of you have seen all of this stuff before, who I am, what I, what I do. Um, I just thought I'd change the quote this time. The quote says, technology is like a fish. The longer it stays on the shelf, the less desirable it becomes. <laughs> So that, that's just to speak to that things are always changing. And if we stay stuck with what we know and what we knew, then it starts to get a bit stinky. <laughs> um, so we're going to briefly go through basically three sections. First of all, I'll explain what Notion is, because um, it's actually quite hard to explain exactly what it is to people that have never used it before. Um, so I'll try my best. And then I'll take you through the basics of how you use it and how you um, create things. And then the last section, I'll talk a little bit about the more advanced things that you can do with it and, and how you can go a bit further with it. So what is Notion? So Notion really is a platform. It's not really an app in the normal sense. Um, so people can often liken Notion to things like Microsoft Word, or Apple Notes or something like that. Um, but it's actually a, a huge platform for information and it's a way of organizing information in very neat and easy to access ways. And I put remember Bento here because I think it's the spiritual successor to Bento. And Bento was an app that Apple used to make in collaboration with FileMaker, which was an app that allowed you to kind of organize your life and store things in there. Um, in a more visual way. So you didn't need to be a programmer or a database expert to be able to make very basic and, and useful databases. Um, so it's used by all kinds of people. It's used by huge corporations and it's used by people just at home. So it doesn't really matter what it is you want to organize. It scales to kind of whatever size you need it to be. So it can literally just be about a place to store insurance information or task lists to do that kind of thing or it can be how you run a whole organization um, and share information across this platform it's collaborative so you can invite people to have access to your databases and have shared access to things and it's cross-platform which to me is the most important thing it means rather than getting a, a piece of software which is very specific for apple or pc or whatever it's, it's universal on all platforms. So it's on Android, iOS, PC. I think there's even Linux versions of it. Um, and it's, it's, I think, most powerful thing. The thing that people tend to come to it for 
is the ability to almost embed anything into a page, um, which I'll show you more once I get into the demo of it. Um, so there's a little video here. Let me know if the sound doesn't come through. It's only about two, three minutes long, just from Notion explaining exactly what it is. Um, so I'll play that now. We all crave clarity and organization. We want a quiet space to think. And we want all the information we need to be there when we need it. Notion gives you both. Whether you're working on your own or on a team of thousands, Notion provides a single space to organize everything that matters. One space to capture your thoughts, manage your projects, or even run an entire company. Every team can have their own home base. Notion is a single home for all your need-to-knows and need-to-dos. Displayed any way you need to see them. Notion gives you a clean, open surface where you can think, write, and plan. Just start typing. It's that simple. Or add any other type of content you like. Images and videos. And much more. Design pages exactly the way you want them. And when you change your mind, rearrange them with a simple drag and drop. Everything in Notion can be customized to grow and change with you. Create as many pages as you need. Pages focused on today. Pages plotting your path to tomorrow. Nest pages within pages within pages so that everything has its place. And you have clear pathways to everything. Find anything with a few clicks. Whether it's your team wiki, product roadmap, meeting notes, or personal tasks. When you use Notion with your team, you share a workspace so that everyone has the same source of truth. Collaborate on the same page at the same time. Or work asynchronously across time zones. And pick up right where your teammates in London or Seoul left off yesterday without missing a thing. And it goes far beyond documents. Create databases to manage team-wide projects, track deals, onboard new employees, publish to the web. Everything you see can be modified to fit you and your team. In a world of too much information scattered across too many tools, sending too many notifications, Notion offers something new, a calm, clear place to focus on the things that actually matter to you. Thank you very much for watching that. <laughs> so I think some of the, the takeaways from that really are that um, Notion tries to replace lots of other apps to kind of make it so people can really only need to use one one platform for everything um, and hopefully save quite a bit of money to and make life a bit simpler. Um, I think one thing that's important to say at this stage is that one of the problems of Notion is it's it's got quite a kind of learning curve. And as you could probably tell from that video, you're kind of bombarded with a lot of stuff and information. And it can seem a little bit overwhelming. Um, so we're going to start with a really basic kind of um, uh, starting with a real blank screen and, and working from there. And then later on, I'll show you how to kind of do some templates and things. So I'm going to open up my Notion and share this with you. So I'll share Notion. So can you see my Notion screen? Yes. OK, great. So first thing I'm going to do is talk you through the interface. So we'll start on the left. So the left is the sidebar. At the top of the left is your workspace. So this workspace area is where you find your account settings um, and where you can switch between accounts. So you can have multiple accounts logged in at the same time. So you can separate all of your work stuff from your personal stuff and still be able to use the app and not have to switch in other ways. It's, it's a nice, quick and easy way to switch between your workspaces. And then you've got your search box here, which allows you to search for anything in your um, notion. 
Notion AI we'll come back to later. Home is just a screen which shows all the most recent things that you've been doing and it tries to kind of show them in a widget view so you can jump straight into something you were just doing. Um, and then inbox is if you've had any uh, comments or messages left by anybody else. So inbox is only really used if you share things with others. Um, so I'm going to start with a new page. So once I have a new page, it's very, very blank. Uh, but it's something that every page has is the same layout and format. So it starts with a title. So I'm going to say this, this is a title. And as soon as you hit return, it then goes into a main space. So the main space is just like any other document. You can just type anything that you need to type. But the real power of, of Notion is the forward slash. So whenever you type a forward slash, it brings up a menu of blocks. And blocks are all the things that you can embed in that document that you, you wouldn't be able to do in a Word document or um, any other word processor, for example. So we can do forward slash and, for example, insert a table immediately in there. Table one. And I'm going to do another forward slash. Get something a bit more interesting. A web website. So I'm going to do, of course, my own one. <laughs> it creates a bookmark. And do another one. Let's do a video. You can embed a video from YouTube, or you can even upload your own video. Although this one, with because it's a free account, it will only let you upload a video of about five megabytes, which isn't very much. So I would, I would I pretty much always embed from YouTube or another video platform if you're using it to share your own videos. Um, so if I go and find another video, uh, YouTube. Um, let's try and find something that isn't about Trump. Um, that's difficult because everything on the front page is Trump. Uh, AI, there we go. This is the face of a god who over. Oh, no. Um, notion, okay. It's not that easy finding an appropriate video to copy in. <laughs> Okay, that will do. Wow, I just built so the most amazing workflow on Monday.com. You build your own workflow? Why? Shush. And when I go in here, I just paste the link. And it will actually embed the video in the document. So you can play it within it. It's not just a link. It's something you can actually... To help you get started in Notion with... with Shush. Um, you can actually embed within your document and move around and find an appropriate spot for it. Um, so at the moment, we're thinking about this just as a document rather than anything else. Um, and so the idea with forward slash is eventually you get fast enough where you don't need to keep scrolling through a list. So if I go back a bit and make it plain again. So I can forward slash tap H for a heading, and this is a heading and then forward slash tap H2, and then this is heading two, and then forward slash image, and then upload an image. So eventually you start typing the first letter of the thing that you want, and it will automatically just go there. It takes a little while to, to kind of learn that, but it speeds it up so much that when you're having to burn through and, and create lots of documents and things, you can, you can get really quick at that. Um, so you've got things like headings, tables, bullet lists, toggle lists, quotes, if you want to kind of, this is a quote by Brad. Um, now, one of the cool things about the making a document this way is everything is entirely separate. So rather than it being like a Word document where it's a, it's a linear thing where everything's actually connected to each other, everything here is draggable. So I can drag everything around in a different order quite easily and, and just change the format of everything. Um, so you can work through and, and fill up your content. And that's a basic page with a basic document. Does anyone have any questions at this point about doc making a basic page and a basic document? 
there's a uh, not actually specifically relevant, but uh, probably worth just answering this. Liz just says there's Notion Web Clipper on the App Store. Should I download this, or go to Notion's website and download from there? I think that's probably a plugin. Yeah, it's a plugin. I'm going to show you the plugin actually because it is useful. Um, but yes, you download from Notion directly. They don't actually have a download on the App Store for some reason. Yeah, thank you. Um, but yeah, for the Web Clipper, because of Safari security, they have to have it on the App Store. Um, but yeah, I, I would download both, is the answer. <laughs> um, so yeah, another thing that every page has, so we're, we're looking at a page right now, is the ability to add an icon. And this has kind of become um, quite kind of, uh, what's the word? It's what they're known for. It's become a style that, that um, Notion has kind of developed where every page has a, as an icon to kind of define it. So you can search for anything. So here I'm going to search for, I don't know, helicopter. Oops. Um, I'm going to call this one um, New, oops. New York Travel Plans. And then so above the icon, you've got a cover as well. And the cover's purpose is just to make it a bit more pleasurable to look at. So it's not, um, oh, interesting choice of cover. Uh, uh, so it's just, because obviously if you have lots of pages that all just are blank pages, it can be very easy to not see one page from another. So one of the cool things you can do is change the cover. So it's got some kind of very plain and ordinary covers that you can choose from. Um, but what you can also do is click on the unsplash link and here you can search Unsplash for anything. So if I look for Mac, it will just find tons of pictures for free that you can use. Just choose that one. Or if I look for New York, of course, it makes more sense. There we go. Chuck New York in there. And then I can click on reposition if it's not kind of showing the best bit um, until I get it. That's how I want it. Um, but at any, any time you can change that cover or you can even upload your own if you want to upload your own picture. Um, but it just gives the page um, more of an identity, basically. Um, here I can change the color as well of, of the um, icons. Um, it's, it's black at the moment because my computer's in dark mode, so it automatically switches between dark and light mode. But you can, in the preferences, set it to stay light or to stay dark. Um, I prefer the dark mode, actually. Um, I think it's better for, for my eyes. Um, so that's that's the basic page, um, really. And that has appeared, as you can see, on the left-hand side. Now, what I can do, for example, if I do another heading, let's do heading one, and this one will be called Hotel Details. So I'm going to do a divider, so a little line. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to do a new page within the page. So this new page is now called Hotel One, um, Monday to Wednesday. And then in here, I'm going to put in a table, a hotel address, hotel room number. And keep going. Telephone. And so you can see you could you can basically write out all of your, your your itinerary for that hotel and all the details for it. So what you'll notice is at the top the, the breadcrumb shows you that this hotel one page is within the New York travel plans. And that New York travel plans is also on the left hand side in the sidebar. So if I click on it again in the sidebar, it'll go back to the home page. And I've got the link back in always to the to the sub page. The sub page will also be within an arrow underneath the original page that it's on. And you can make as many of these sub pages as you want. So you can keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. So you can drill down into information. So in that hotel, for example, I might within there have um, uh, restaurants. Oh, can't spell. Do page food near the hotel one, and then 
and I might embed some reviews from online um, or even a YouTube video of a, of a restaurant I fancy going to. So now I've got the home page and then within the home page I've got the hotel one I'm visiting for the first part and I've got my details of the hotel and then a link here to go further in and have a list of all the good food places that I've found near that hotel. And I might have another one which is shopping and another one which is museums. So you can kind of see that you can build this kind of tree of pages, which is essentially a, a basic database. Um, which if you were obviously doing things with Microsoft Word, for example, you would be making lots of separate documents or having one big document that you have to scroll through um, and organize yourself and find ways to manage manage with it. So the the problem, I guess, at this stage is because you're starting with a blank page, you're limited by imagination pretty much <laughs> and trying to figure out how to organize things, how to uh, put things in order. And that's where templates come in. Um, so templates are pretty much how, <coughs> excuse me, how most people work with um, Notion because it can be a bit um, daunting to kind of build a database from scratch. Um, excuse me. So thankfully, there are trillions of templates available and they've just launched a template store. <coughs> and the vast majority of templates are free. Some people do sell some templates and they're usually two or three pounds. They're not usually very expensive. Um, I found a, a brilliant one for, for um, my studies. I'm at university at the moment and I found this amazing template which saves me so much time. And it covers everything from my reading lists and notes on books and assignments and grade management and all that kind of stuff. Um, and it cost me about eight pounds, but it saved me so much time that it was totally worth it. So if you find a template that, that kind of saves you some time, it's, it's probably worth the two or three pounds um, to buy it. And someone's put a lot of time and effort into building it. Um, so let's have a look. We've got a few options in here. They've split it into, it's a bit like the Apple App Store, um, Discover, Work, Life and School. So Discover is obviously things that they're trying to show us that are new and that have got a lot of attention recently. Um, work is going to be clearly work-based things. Um, but let's start with life because that's going to probably relate to more people. So here's one. We'll start with the personal finance tracker and that's free. Um, so on every template you have the chance to preview it. So if you preview it you see a live version of it but it doesn't make a copy of it into your notion. So it allows you to play with it as if it's a real working copy um, without you actually ruining or messing up any of your your um, saved pages. So you can see this one's quite a complicated one and it's got lots of pre-designed formulas that will generate kind of these figures for you. So it's just it will just literally be a case of clicking in and editing whatever changes you want to make. Um, let me go back. And so if I wanted to add this to my sidebar, just click add. And it's now cloning a copy of it to my workspace and it takes a few seconds and da, 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 da. so yeah it would literally just be a case of clicking in and editing the content here I'm going to spend eight hundred dollars for pizza <laughs> and so in in every table that this particular template has, there's what's called properties. So the properties are these, um, what these columns are. So we've got source, amount, tags, that kind of thing. So to talk about properties, I'll go back to my blank page and I'll just do a new page. database. So I'm going to do an inline database, which puts the database here. So a database takes a table and makes it a much more powerful, advanced kind of table um, that allows you to actually pick out the data of what you're 
you're trying to organize or trying to um, do. So I'm going to do, um, what should we do here? Let's do a packing list. Uh, I'm going to say sunglasses here. So the name is the first property. The second property is tags. So there are no tags yet for this database because it's a new database. So I can just type some in. So I'm going to say, um, let's make this a packing list for a family. So it's going to be Brad, um, I don't know, mom, dad, kid one, <laughs> kid two. <laughs> And so it allows you to build these selectable tags that for the next one, you can just quickly click through and add. Um, let me add a few more things because we need some data before it makes much sense to people. Um, let's call this um, video. Um, it'll be. So those are the two standard property columns that are added to every database, but we can add more. And there's quite a few that you can choose from. So I can choose files and media. And that, for example, could be receipts. So I'll put this as receipts that you could upload um, and add. And it'll just allow you to choose a file and, and add it in. Um, let's add a couple more. We could have a priority level. So we can say, um, high and medium and low. Now the point of having uh, properties is we can create views of the data. So I can make a new view, let's do board, and it's automatically split things into property, uh, into um, priority. So I've got the low priority here and no priority level here. So it's taken the same data and showing it in a different view that makes it easier to kind of split out and see what's what's important. So if I change some of these to medium, this one to high, and we go back to the board view, we've now got our packing list split into priority and which things are the most important. And we can move them around and say actually deodorant's not that important but sunglasses are high or oops. Um, but sunglasses are, are much more high. Um, let me stretch my window a bit further. Um, and there are multiple, you can make as many views as you want. So we can do um, another table. But in this table, we can specify. So if I click on edit view, I can say I only want this to show um, anything from for Brad. Oops. So I go to filter and then um, let me delete that one. Filter, choose tags and the tag I want is to be Brad. Oops, that was easier than I thought. So yeah, click on the filter, select Brad. So now this table, and I'll rename it, this table is just going to split out the data that's tagged with Brad. And it means I can I can quickly see. Oh, it didn't do that, did it? <laughs> Let me change that in filter. Contains Brad. Interesting. That's supposed to filter everything by that tag. I'm not sure why that's not working, um, but it usually does. Um, so you can see that you can you can subdivide that simple table into multiple things, um, and it can be charts. Um, obviously, with a packing list, it's not really that useful. Um, and you can have lists and timelines. If it's a project that you're working on, you could have um, an item appear here. So this could be buy suitcase. And this has to happen over these three days. That's the only chance I can buy a suitcase. 
Um, and then we can even add um, a calendar. So if you want to show when you're going to buy some of the items, you can move things around on a calendar and it will change the data everywhere else. So it's a really powerful way of, of kind of using tables, which are still very simple to use, but it means you can split out into these multiple ways of seeing things. So you just create that just by doing a forward slash and a database. Oops. And you've got two types, you've got inline, which does it as I've done it here. So it's just part of the document, or you can have it create the database as another page that it goes to. So it separates out the database. So instead of it being in the document, it's just linked to by clicking on this here. Um, does anyone have any questions about databases? That's no, it's quite a lot of information to throw at you all at once. Uh, we have one unrelated to database question, if you'd like to answer okay, it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of think I may have answered it, but already. Anyway, uh, Chris, uh, welcome from Tucson, Arizona, says, I have maybe 1,700 notes in Apple Notes spanning 20 years. Could I take the whole mess and drop it into Notion, or would I be better off reorganizing it in my Apple Notes? Um, that is a really good question. So I haven't done that because Apple have really pumped up the energy on notes and made notes really useful. What I have done though is anything, any part of my life that requires real like large amounts of data and large amounts of stuff that I need to access regularly, then I do that in Notion. So all of my studies, all of my reading, all of my business related stuff is all in Notion. And I still use Apple Notes for anything personal or anything that's um, just a random note or something. But if you've stored your entire world in notes, it might make sense to break out some stuff into Notion, but still keep notes for the bulk of, of what you've got. So for example, I, I've, I copied from notes my home inventory, which just had like pictures and details of all my stuff in case I need to make an insurance claim or something because a database makes much more sense for that because you can sort things and then get total values of things and, and build a proper kind of app, if you like, to, to organize things. But for basic notes, I would probably still stick with Apple Notes because um, they have certainly improved it an awful lot and it's it's quick and easy to access. Um, so yeah. actually, sorry, I've, yeah, I've, I've added a link to your fabulous meeting from last year. Uh, Chris, oh, no, <laughs> revisit that. Um, Mark uh, has just popped up that he says uh, it can, uh, Notion can import from a number of applications, but there's no mention of notes. But there is a universal import option which might work. Yeah, I think it will export just basic um, CSS data from notes. I think Apple Notes. I can't remember if Apple Notes lets you export from multiple formats. Let me just check. File, export, do, 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 export as PDF. Hmm. Or if I just drag and drop a note, does it save it in a format? No. Interesting. But Apple Notes doesn't actually let you export in anything other than a PDF. Which right. is not very helpful. <laughs> so it is a bit of a closed garden in that respect. So the, I guess, yeah, the, one of the advantages of Notion is that it allows you, it's got kind of data portability, so you can bring stuff in and export stuff out quite easily. But if the, the source isn't playing ball, then you might have to copy and paste some stuff straight into it, um, which might be a pain if you've got 1,400 <laughs> notes to go through. So I, oh, <laughs> I, I think that's why I would prioritise and just move the things which make sense in a database type thing. Um, but having said that, you can use it just for basic notes. There's, there's no reason. And there is the advantage that you can embed anything. Whereas on Apple Notes, you're stuck to just a few basic things that you can add to a note. Um, yeah, Mark's just said you can in import PDF. The, the problem with importing PDFs is they're larger files and it will be embedded on the page as a document rather than a, an editable 
thing. So yeah, you can import PDFs, um, uh, but then it's just going to be an image rather than a workable note that you can edit, and that would be the problem, I guess, of that. Um, Thank you. So yeah, any any confused people by at this stage? It's probably good to find out if anybody's like, what the hell is this, and why am I watching it? <laughs> <laughs> Because I felt that way the first time I used it when a friend told me about it years ago. I was like, no, no, you have to watch. You have to, you have to get into this. It's going to change your life. And I opened it and I closed it straight away. <laughs> so this is too much. I can't, I can't learn this thing. It's too big. It's too heavy. But I realized, as with most things, the reason it's a bit scary and a bit overwhelming is there's so much you can do with it that you almost feel like you can't do anything with it because it's too much to kind of think about. But that's why I think it's really, really important to always start with a template because there'll be a template for anything. Uh, I wonder if anyone has a suggestion for something they might want to organize that I could find a template for. Do they have anything in mind, anything that they do with their information that they would like to do? I'll give you a few that's seconds. <laughs> No. Check the chat. What? Well, oh, someone said, "What problem does it solve?" Um, well, the problem it solves is organization and that being able to have multiple types of data in one place. So there's lots of apps, for example, for storing uh, playlists of, of YouTube videos, or there's an app for storing recipes, and there'll be another app for. Um, storing all of your bank statements and your financial reports whereas this is saying no you just need one app for data because it's all data and you can choose exactly how you want it to look um, rather than having multiple places that you store everything you can have one central location for everything and it means you always have access to everything in a very quick and easy way so i think that's the the um the main point of it really is it's just once you learn the basics of notion rather than learning 20 or 30 different applications you've you've got unlimited applications really um that all work in a very similar way um so without any suggestions i'm just going to grab another template because that financial one was a bit boring um so if i go to the home do a new page templates um life so let's have a scroll through. So it's Christmas gifts planner, recipe book, favorite coffee shops, job applications, apartment hunting, shopping lists, to do's. Um, there we go, there's a recipe list that someone's made. It looks quite advanced. So I'm gonna add that to my, my own Notion workspace. It takes a few moments. So now I've got recipe list. What's cool is a lot of the people that make the templates also include videos to teach you how to use it and, and some um, guidance. So you're not just left blind, usually, with most of the, the popular ones. So this one, you can see, has built a system where you have these cards and it's created this, this menu on the left. So if I do a new recipe, oops, This one requires a setup, which I haven't done. Go into a recipe here. So yeah, when you click on one of the cards, it opens a, in something called a slide overview. So it makes the card bigger and allows you to kind of change and say, actually, I don't, I don't really like that recipe as much. I'll give it a three star. Um, and I can go back. Um, and let's get another example. Oops. Life. Um, let's get something more basic. Subscription tracker, that would be useful. I don't know about you, but I have so many stealth subscriptions that I don't know I'm paying for. <laughs> be a good way to keep track of them. Film, film lists, holiday gifts, what else? Meal planning, to-dos, weekly tasks. 
mood tracker. Uh, let's do. Let's do the basic to do list. added to my table. So this one's just a basic to-do list and it just means that someone's already done the work for you. You don't have to start with a blank page and figure out all of the blocks that you need and all of the views that you need. They've already done it for you. So this one starts with something called a Kanban view, which puts your to-dos in a, in a priority column order. And you can drag things around to change, for example, from a not done to in progress to done. And they've created a separate view for the things which are high priority, separate view for deadlines, um, and then status. You can just get it to show all of the to dos with statuses there and notes. Um, so, templates are really the, the most important way to start, I think, because it means you're not going into it completely blind and um, you can actually reverse engineer most of the templates and figure out how they work and learn by unpicking what someone else has already done with them. Um, so let me get to my next bit. That's databases. Do, do, do. Templates. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so the templates in the marketplace are not the only templates. There's, these are all the templates which have kind of made it into the, the kind of Notion's private kind of marketplace. But you can literally just Google for any other template. So um, let me share. Let me share my Safari window. Do, do, do. Um, can you see my Safari window if I share now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Quite complicated trying to share multiple things. Um, so if I, I, I just Google everything with Notion template for I'm trying to think of something obscure. Um, dog information. <laughs> And there'll be tons. So here you go, best pet, pet templates from Notion. Pet care planner, pet hub, pet sitter notes, dog poop tracking sheet. <laughs> Handy. <laughs> yeah. So all of us need those records. Oh no, it has like consistency and everything. And, oh, that's not <laughs> what I was planning to look at this evening. <laughs> So you can see it, you just have, you're only a really quick Google search away from finding somebody else that's already done all the hard work. You don't have to start from from nothing. Um, I'm going to look for Notion template for. Can you think of anything, Mike? Uh, theatre. There we go. <laughs> theatre template and Notion. This template is for theatrical actors and technicians to organise their shows, earnings, and other necessary information. I'm going to view the template. So now I'm viewing it on the web view. So the cool thing about Notion is you can use the app on your Mac, on your phone or iPad, but you can also just log into it on any web browser. And so here I can see um, this database and I can click start. Yes, I thought theatre was a bit vague, but this is this is actually interesting, isn't it? Because it, it's for specifically it's theatre technicians, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it there's an, it's very nuanced. There's there'll be a template for something very odd and left ball and really specific, because um, somebody out there has had a need and got frustrated and made it themselves. Yes, and then made it available to everyone. Um, that's the cool thing is that if you do make a put a lot of effort and time into making a database or a a template for yourself, you can then share it for free on their platform so others can get it, or you can sell it. So if you put a lot of work in, 
you could um, make a few pounds by selling your template and um, let other people have an easier time. <laughs> so yeah, this one looks like it's a nice straightforward template for a theatre technician. And they've got shows that they're working on. If I click on that show, it will bring more information, how much money they're going to get, that kind of thing. So it really is worth just Googling for whatever need you have and then just adding Notion template to the Google search. Um, theatre kid calendar template, oh God. Do you want theatre kids? <laughs> Costume design, play tracker for actors. There's just so many. See, this one's $1, so it doesn't break the bank. Um, William's asking, this is the process. What is the deliverable? I'm not sure what you mean by that, William. William, would you like to unmute and explain? Billy? No, I don't. Yeah, no. Hold on. I, I'm not sure if I'm coming through here. I mean, I can understand what you're trying to do here, but what are you trying to achieve at the end of this? Um, nothing in particular. I'm just showing you an app and how to use it. Okay. Um, so, it's, got, it's got so many uses, I couldn't possibly distill into it what you're going to end up with because it's down to you and what you want to use it for. Mm -hmm. So it would be like asking somebody, what's the end purpose of using Microsoft Office? Well, I'd say, for example, like, <clears throat> I'm thinking in particular about Excel. Excel has got a very clear, has developed a very clear um, set of expectations about what the what the deliverables are, whereas I get a sense of people formulating the, the problem here, but not necessarily what the end point is that they're trying to achieve. But that's what I'm struggling with. Mm, um, can you help me out a bit with it? I'm really not sure what you mean. I think when you say deliverable, what do you mean? Something you, you give to somebody else? Yeah, I think, you know, what are you trying to tell them that, they're, that is different from where they are now? Is something? Is their knowledge better? Is their process better? Is their worldview better? What's the before and what's the after? Um, I'm I'm really struggling. I don't really follow what you mean. Oh, that's fine. That's okay. Don't worry. Um, it's just it's a platform, so it has so many different uses. Mm -hmm. it, it's really hard to kind of say what you're going to end up with because you have to do the searching yourself to meet whatever you your needs are mm -hmm. so yeah, like excel is a good example because excel originally was a very basic table app it mm -hmm. was just a table of formulas but over the years people have pushed excel to such extreme limits and made such crazy amazing complicated things that the average person couldn't come along and recreate that they'd have to either find an existing uh, version of it that, that somebody would kindly share or they'd have to sit and learn Excel, which would take a very long time if they're not that way inclined. Whereas what Notion does is it takes a similar notion of databases and, and tables, but makes them easily accessible by anyone that can use a word processor, rather than having to learn coding and database management. There's no management involved at all. It's just a document tree that you can add stuff to. But in, it, I mean, that's why I said at the beginning, it is a bit hard to understand without just diving in and using it because no mm -hmm. two people use it the same way because there are so many things that you can do with it. Fair enough. No, no, I get the drift. Uh, thank you very much. I would really just encourage you to mess around with it and break it a bit and see see what it can do and try and take something of yours which you do in Excel perhaps and see if you can recreate it in Notion. And then the, the things that it will give you that Excel won't give you is just ease of use, I think and make things look a bit more attractive to the eye and a bit less kind of um, information kind of overwhelm. But yeah, it's, it's something you have to kind of mess around with and figure it out that way. The other thing actually before I move on is um, the Notion YouTube is actually really, really good, their YouTube account. Um, Notion, and they have lots of training videos. We all crave their, clarity. Their YouTube homepage. Stop auto playing. So they have 
Notion 101, which is all the, the basics and pretty much what I'm sharing with you today. And then they have these case studies that show how different companies and, and people use it. And that might help answer your question, actually. It might be easier to see it from a perspective of someone that's using it for a very niche or specific purpose. And then you've got some more, the stories are more like ordinary people using it and less corporate. Um, and then it shows you more of the corporate stuff and how you can use it in work. And then this, this playlist shows all the other people on YouTube that are talking or using Notion. Um, so they have a real big library of um, kind of supporting videos and tutorials and things like that. Um, so I would suggest that, yeah, a dive into that would be really helpful because today's only going to give you an overview. I'm not really expecting any of you to be able to kind of open Notion tonight and, and understand it all. It's just more to give you a flavour of what's possible and what, what you can do with it. I suppose that the bit that sort of I'm trying to think about is that if people are coming in and are trying to invest in this, what's the added value? If they invest in this, where is the added value further down the line? So we talk about the corporate stuff and you know what they do. You know, there are other people. Um, you know, I haven't got a sense of this where the added value is further down the line. I mean, you've hinted at it, but I haven't. I don't have the notion, so I, and that's a question you could ask them. And I, like I said, a lot of those videos would would answer that. I think you'd see other people using it and why they use it and what their benefits are. But I'm not a salesperson, so I'm not going to be able to convince you if I, if you're not convinced, and and that's fine. Fine. Right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. A anything else? Anyone else? Don't think so, Brad. Certainly nothing else on the um, chat. Okay, so what's next? So, um, what have I missed? So I've missed a couple of things. So on any page that you're on, that you've created, um, so if you go back to New York, I might have a family member that I want to share my New York plans with. Um, and so I can click on share and I can email it to someone and they will get a link to to join it and be able to edit and add things. Um, and another really cool thing is you can publish it. So I'm going to publish it to the web. And when you publish to the web, it creates a link for you, a public link. Um, and you've got a couple of things you can do. You can customize whether it appears light or dark on the web. And you can even add uh, Google Analytics if you want to track who's who's accessing it and when, that kind of thing. Um, but if I publish and then view site, it now makes it a full website that you've just created for free. So any wiki or database or any kind of big um, chunk of information, it could be that you run a small club and you want a central place for your club to be able to access all of your rules and forms to download, um, all the different parts that you need to kind of get people to access. You could create that, that um, template in Notion and then publish it to the web and just give people the web address for it. Um, obviously, the web address that they give you is quite unwieldy because it has to be unique. So I would suggest using like a, 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 an address shortener or something to make it more palatable because that's a very long address and the address is long on purpose because it's the it's the way it means that people won't accidentally stumble across this page they have to have the specific address to get there um, but also bear in mind whatever you publish this way is public so you wouldn't want to put anything in there that's super personal or private or anything um, you'd you'd want to make sure it's something that you wouldn't mind becoming public if, if it did so be yeah, be cautious about that. Um, but that's I think that's a brilliant thing that I don't think anything else does that allows you to kind of turn your information into an instant website that you can create. I know when if you upgrade and get the paid for version, you can choose a domain name so it's not quite as complicated, and you can password protect things and make it so it's not public and you can have a more private experience. But lots of people create their entire websites using this. Um, I've seen photographers who've made their um, portfolios using this platform. Um, 
so it's 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 as good as your imagination is basically and, and what you what you kind of want to get from it if we go back to this window are you still seeing the notion window or is it just safari at the moment uh we're seeing the All right. website okay that's interesting it doesn't switch between both go back to notion so you didn't actually see me <laughs> do, do, do. Select both New York travel plans. Okay, now it should be back to Notion. That's better. Yep. Yeah. So basically, I clicked on share and then publish, and then it creates this link at the top here. And then I clicked on view site, and it opened in Safari. So basically, anything you make can also become an instant website. Um, so up here, you've also got comments. So you can add, leave a comment on a, a, a section. So this needs to be clearer. And whoever's logged in, it leaves a, a little um, letter for that person. And so you can communicate about your content directly. So if you're working on, I don't know, an HR document with a colleague, you could both be accessing the same document and leaving notes all over it about your edits and changes. And it's just an, a very simple, direct way without having to use another platform like Slack or a messaging platform to um, work on something and collaborate. Notion AI, yes, I'm coming to that. <laughs> so yeah, AI is, is a big part of, of what they've um, pushed into as everybody has now. It's kind of almost weird if a service doesn't have AI. I think the problem with AI is it's become an easy way for a lot of platforms and, and applications to monetize things. So most things now, if they have AI elements, they're usually locked behind a paywall or you have to have a premium version of ChatGPT, for example. Um, Notion does it a bit differently. They kind of have half and half. So they have limits um, for the free accounts, but you can still use AI, which I'll, I'll show you shortly. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's probably the next big feature to look at. So if we go back to New York travel plans, I'm going to find, um, let's go into mm -hmm. And another template that's got um let's choose a dashboard let's try that one add waiting for it to add because it's a big one okay so this one's a student database for someone to organize their their work so this one you can see has some information in it. So this one's got some study information and some actual kind of notes and things. So I can click down um, at the AI and I can ask the AI about my information. So I know that there is something in here about ionic bonds. Can you, oops, can you Show me data on ionic bonds. So it's it's surfaced because this particular database is huge. It's actually found everywhere in the database that mentions ionic bonds, and I can jump straight to it rather than having to mine through all of the different sections. So it allows you to really quickly navigate through your data. Um, if this was a corporate database that had stuff like marketing data, you would be able to ask it things like, can you tell me what the um, response rate was to our last email campaign? And it will just give you the data. You don't have to go and find it. Um, you could also use it for like the basic things. So I can say, um, write a short paragraph about why I, oops, why ionic bonds are important. So it's 
now using ChatGPT to get that data. And then I can insert it into page and it becomes its own page of information. So it allows you to really quickly fill out kind of data if you need to, to pop stuff in there if you're studying or it's hard for me to kind of come up with all the possible scenarios that you might use that. Um, but the AI is very powerful, but it is limited. So down here it has the option to get unlimited AI. And then you can see it has a, a monthly fee because AI actually does use a lot of energy and it does cost a lot. Um, so they're not making tons of profit from AI. It's, it does actually cost them an awful lot. I read somewhere that uh, every 10 chat GPT requests is two liters of water used um, in cooling and various other things. So it's a very energy intensive process. So most AI based things are around eight or nine pounds per month if you want unlimited. Um, but I've not really ever hit the limits of just basic day to day use. It's only if you're intensely using it for business, that I think you would hit the daily use limits. Can the bento format be downloaded? Uh, Pat Patrick, could you let me could you unmute and let me know what you mean by that? Yeah, the the um, bento was superseded by um, forward. Um, sorry, tap forms. Yes, yeah. and uh, I wondered if. Uh, you could download the uh, old bento layout. Um, no, it wouldn't hold the layout. You could you could probably import the data. So if you've still got a working copy of bento, you should be able to export the data in the raw data that that, that it has. But it wouldn't preserve any of the layouts or anything. Oh, okay. Um, Thank but you. But that's essentially what what kind of we're doing here is is recreating what bento used to give us. Um, but it is a lot more powerful than Bento, but Bento had the advantage of being quite kind of apply and very easy to kind of move pretty boxes around. Um, but yeah, it was quite annoying when Apple canned it <laughs> all those years ago. Yeah, um, it didn't be around for very long. Um, uh, but it was actually it was part of FileMaker, and FileMaker still exists. So if you really miss Bento and really want to continue doing things that way, then FileMaker is actually very close to Bento now. So, so sorry, what is that again? FileMaker. OK. So FileMaker still belongs to Apple, um, and it's used for more advanced things, but you can use it for very basic templates as well. Um, and that's the nearest thing that you'll get to Bento, I think. Uh, lovely. Thank you. And I think it does actually work with Bento files, so you might be able to import a Bento file into that. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any questions about AI? Or this, obviously, this specific AI? Certainly not in chat. OK. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so do, 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 what if I miss out? Let's have a look through my list. Customization, we've done that. Oh, no, there's a couple of things. So if we go to our, um, let's go to our student dashboard. So some people, if I go to notebooks, for example, um, no, that doesn't have anything in it. No. Um, so you've got a couple of options. There aren't, unlike a word processor, you don't have tons of fonts, for example, or ways of um, customizing the look and feel beyond what what we've got here but you do have some basic settings at the side here so you can switch between three fonts very generous the default font serif which just kind of makes things look a bit more friendly i guess um, and then mono which is more kind of like computery datary um, and then you can change things so they're not full width so you can make it a narrow column instead of full width and you can do things like turn off discussions and comments. And then this is where you can actually um, do things like duplicate, copy it, um, delete it, 
Um, you can also go back to an older version. So if you've made an edit and you messed it up, you can go backwards. So it's quite easy to undo something or, or go back to a previous version. If you've tinkered and think, oh crap, I've messed it all up, you can quite easily swing, swing the clock back. Um, and then this is where you've got your import and export options. So if you wanted to import data, so it allows you to export in PDF, HTML, Markdown, and CSV. So it's quite easy to get data out. And I think that's why I like using it, because it feels like I could easily move to another platform if I have to. Whereas a lot of platforms, you're locked in, and that's the only format you can keep your data in, as you found with Bento. Um, you can also connect to other apps. So if there's other things that you use, other platforms that you use, so for example, I use Typeform for forms for my clients in my therapy work. So I have it that when a client fills out a form, it will automatically save all of the data into my Notion database. So I don't have to manually copy stuff in. Um, and you can also use things like Zapier and IFTTT to have things automatically triggered when something happens. So you could have it that when somebody emails you with a keyword in the email, it would create a new entry in their database. So you can get really sophisticated with how, how much automation there is. Um, but that's a, a much higher level of use, really. Um, and you've got another really simple but basic thing is you can just favorite something. So it, you have a list of things that you get to an awful lot. So if there's a specific note that I access all the time, I can have that note appear in my favorite so I don't have to go hunting through my list. Um, and then updates just is like a tree that shows every change that's happened on that page. If I make a change, it should appear an update. And it means, again, you can swing back the clock and go back to that version. And then analytics will just tell you how often this page has been viewed or how many times you've, you've opened it and edited it, that kind of thing. Nothing too exciting in that one. Um, I think the last thing I'll, I'll kind of talk about before we can have a more general discussion, I guess, is that Notion have been busy buying lots of other pieces of software. So what's really cool is they now have a calendar app and they're also launching a mail app. And the mail app is really incredible. Um, it's not available yet. And to begin with, it will only work with Gmail email accounts. Um, but they integrate all of your data. And I'll show you a brief snippet with one of the YouTube videos. But the calendar, for example, if I launch the calendar, this is a separate um, calendar app. So let me share it with you. Uh, share. I'm just going to share my entire desktop. That's easier. Um, so this is Notion on the left. And here is the Notion calendar app. So the Notion calendar app is almost more Apple than Apple. It's much nicer um, interface, I think, than Apple's. Um, it's got loads of built-in support for things like Zoom meetings, Teams meetings, automatically generates the join buttons on the, on the events and things. But it's a basic calendar app. But what's really awesome is if I link it to my packing list, for example, it will, it will show stuff on your calendar that's time-based on your database. So if I'd made some of my, um, oh, there it is. I made my uh, suitcase. Where has it gone? Turn it back on. So I, do you remember if I go back to my New York page and my packing list in the hotel? Whoops. Oh, I, where's it gone? Anyway, it's in there. <laughs> Um, it's automatically brought in the event of buy a suitcase on those three days that I said I wanted to be able to buy a suitcase. So rather than having to me go into my calendar and now duplicate, and I made this list of all the things I need to do, before this calendar app, you'll then have to manually go to another calendar app and then manually type in all the things that you've just organized yourself. Well, now you just have to link a, a database that you've created. In this case, it's the packing list and all the data is there on your calendar. So if you use it for project management, or if you use it for managing to-dos and tasks, or you want to use it to manage, like um, you could even use it to manage uh, chores that someone has to do in a shared household and that kind of thing. 
you can easily just display all of that data directly in your calendar without having to create loads of events for those items. Um, so it's, it's really, really powerful. Oh, here we go, the button takes us back, back. So they're trying to create a whole big productivity platform. Um, and I think it's probably worth showing you the, what the mail will do as well, the mail app. Um, if we go back to Safari, YouTube, Notion, Mail. on their website, Notion, Mail. Join At the moment, it's a wait list and it's meant to be launching in January. Um, but I will just... Um, there was a video, where has it gone? Oh, I'm... Start from the beginning. Okay, here you go. Basically, what I was struggling to show you is that it integrates all of your all of your data from Notion into your mail app. So, for example, this email from Natalie, you can tag it with one of the tags that appears in your Notion database, and it will then be intrinsically linked to that database. So, it's it's about giving a kind of full integration, um, and so you can view your emails in a kind of database way rather than a single list way and work with your emails as if it's a, a kind of a proper database and not just this single list that we've all been doing for 30 years. Um, I think the reason it's tied to Gmail only at the moment is because it uses labels a lot to get this done and to tag things with labels. Um, but it just means that you I think what they're trying to achieve is that you put your data in once and it's accessible in all the different places rather than having to make versions of it in mail and calendars and to do, um, reminders apps and things like that. Um, but it's definitely worth you properly looking through this page to see what's coming. And it, a lot of people are, are quite excited about it and it's going to change quite a lot how email can be thought about. Um, I think that's pretty much it for the most part. If there's any general questions, just about everything on the whole, and then we can move on to just any any old questions. I'm happy to try and answer any problems. They're very quiet this evening. <laughs> uh, you um, can unmute the mic. You don't have to do it by chat. You can unmute the mic. Yes, please, to. please do feel free to unmute if you have a question that you'd like to throw at Brad. Thank you. Yes, I have a question, Brad. Um, you said to download the app from the Notion website, but there's also yeah. an app um, in the Apple App Store as well. Yes, that's the, uh, oh yes, that's the Safari. Yeah, that, that reminds me, I need to show you. Uh, there's the Safari Clipper. Um, so that's a, a way for you to get information from a website into your database. So um, if I'm in this website, so if I go to Wikipedia, for example, oops, and find something on Apple. I can clip this page straight into a database. So I'm going to add it to my hotel database, <laughs> save page. And it now takes that information and it's put the link straight into my database. So if there's any databases that you're making that have links for things, it, the Web Clipper is a really easy way to, to shove a link straight into it. 
but when you go to the app store that's the only thing that will appear is the the um the web clipper the notion web clipper so they don't actually distribute the full app on the app store you have to go to notions website to download the app all right the thank you Thanks. It's, it's still legit legitimately notion but it's just a small tool but not the actual full app okay thank you you're welcome anybody else what problem is this tool solved that the other tools could not hmm i don't know <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I struggle to understand your perspective there, um, William. Do you want to unmute? Yeah, I, I, I get a sense of the, the potential of this tool, but I, I can't see the endpoint or um, problems that I would have tried to have solved with other tools. If that makes sense. So where does this get me to that other tools wouldn't get me to either quickly or in the right direction or with the speed or whatever? Um, hmm. What's its sales pitch? Sorry? What's its sales pitch? It's just that it's all your data in one place. That's literally what they say. Is it's the, the everything app. It's one app. Instead of having 20 apps, you can have one app that stores everything. So rather than having an app that's your that helps you organize your movie library and another app which helps you keep a, a track of all the books that you're reading and another app that has all your recipes in it, you can have one place that you store everything. Mm -hmm. And no other app really does that. No, I understand. I understand the principle of that. It's the practicalities of demonstrating it to people who um, you know who are trying to to do this? I mean, I, I use other apps that, that that actually make this point that they're actually they're almost a, a super app that's above everything else. Uh, mm -hmm. With them, I can see where it's coming from. This one, I'm not so sure. Really, can I? Sorry, can I? slip a sentence in here um billy i can't i can't show it to you because it's private but um nmug uses um this uh, an app which i'd never heard of um i'm pretty app phobic as you probably know i mean things get technical i head for the um exit mm. but uh i quickly 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 learned everything that i needed to know in order to contribute to the database uh, and just and this is a tiny, tiny, tiny example that scrapes the surface even of what I do. But, for example, um, when I'm looking for information for next week's meeting, um, I open Notion. I go to the calendar and there's a link on the there are links on the calendar that will take me to places where I can download images of the speaker, uh, what they're speaking about, their website, just all of the information um, is is all being um, squirreled away uh, into into the nation into the Notion database, and um, it's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I mean, it makes certainly makes my job for NMUG um, much easier than it might otherwise be. And I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that there aren't other apps that can do the same thing. There may well be, but um, Dan Wasink chose Notion and. Um, I support him in that choice. No, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, it's it's a question of the practicalities of actually seeing how it operates because I get a sense of it. It's there. I just I can't see the track through it to get to where I need to be. But that's me. Well, I, I would say there is that this wasn't really designed to be training. It's more of an overview, so you can see if it interests you, yeah. and you can spend some more time. It takes time took me a lot of time to really understand how it works and, and why I might need to use it. Um, so it was just a few use cases for you to see and to see if it sparked any interest. But it'll be, yeah, down to you to really look a bit harder into it and see whether it's of any interest to you. And it might not be at all. You might think it's overkill or it's overcomplicating things and I'll stick with notes and Excel spreadsheets and that's fine. 
No, I think the important thing is that it annoys me that I can't get a sense of it. And actually, that's actually the, the, the presentation that actually produce more benefit further down the line. The, pe- the things that I just can't get a handle on. And then six months later, I've got the message. And I'm really quite signed up to it. And there have been a number of those over the year. Uh, I think this might just turn out to be one of them. Sony use it, Apple use it. So there's a massive amount of investment in it and people believe in it. And it's it's become like the main platform for most new new organizations use it because it's so simple for anyone to use. Um, so it's, I don't think it's something that's just going to disappear or, or be a flash in the pan. Um, so I think I don't think there's any risk in you spending the time learning it or, or trying to find a use for it. Um, but it's it's really difficult for me to show in a one or two hour presentation all the possibilities. It's just impossible because it can do so many things. So it's it was just a snapshot really of, of what what it's capable of. Um, so oh Chris Chris has got the, your hand raised. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Brad. I mean, one of the things tagging on to the conversation you and William are having, um, we've you mentioned one of the drawbacks being learning curve. And this is one of the things that I'm curious about because, you know, most of us are older. We've got just reams and tons of information. And, you know, the, the vision that we've had since 1984 of interrelating everything and, and you know, suddenly your world completely makes sense. Um is, is very alluring, but I'm wondering in terms of the learning curve, is this something you can gradually build and, and it's very comprehensible as you're going along, or do you have to get, you know, I've got to get from here to Chicago before it's going to make any sense, no, know, no. that kind of thing? Um, I, I, I think the, the, it's the second. It's You start with something small and you start with a, a basic template that already exists where you don't have to create anything, where you're just data entry, basically. So I would maybe find a template for, for me, my first template, as I said earlier, was actually an insurance inventory template that allowed me to just have pictures of all of the, the valuable things that I own and sort them into rooms and have their receipts added and warranty information and serial numbers and dates so when they were bought and scanned uploads of the receipts. There, there's no easy way of really doing that without having a specific app. Whereas this was my way into it because it was very simple. It's just a table of information, um, but it allowed me to really understand the process of how it works. And I used that for about probably six months, just using it for that one purpose. And then I just got slowly tempted by more and more of the templates that I would look at. And I'll keep finding a template and like, oh, actually, that would be useful for this. And oh, there's something else. And then it kind of switched in my mind that every time I have a need, I just will look for a template first. So if there's something I wish I could do or something, uh, there's an app that's not quite doing it as I want it, I would then Google it and find the Notion template and somebody has already done it. So I've never actually created anything from scratch. I've only ever used templates because there are so many thousands of them. And so it just becomes about learning the interface, really, rather than actually having to code anything. If you are like very um, technical, you can learn the, the, the back end of the database and you can learn formulas and things and how to, to relate one database to another. But you really don't need to, because for whatever you want to do, someone has already done that work. So that I get the fear factor because it is a lot of stuff to, to look at and go through. But I would start really, really small. Start with something very basic, even if it's like a, a film collection or something like that, some way of organizing your books or something um, to really get a taste of it. And it, it does it does creep up on you. You start to think, oh, what else can I organize? What else can I add to this? What else can I make more efficient? And like, for example, I can be on the street and I don't know, I walk past a, a glasses shop, a spectacle shop. And I go in, I'm like, oh, what's my, what's my prescription? 
and I know like because I've got my personal section in Notion and I've organized all my health documents and things it's two taps away whereas before I would have to go back home hunt through a load of pieces of paper or try and find some random note that I'd left somewhere on my phone whereas because I've made the time to organize and put things in order um, then I can instantly get to that information I've got scans of my passport in my travel section I've got um, even some x-rays in there that I can easily share with people and it just makes it uh, the one place that you need to go so rather than remembering which app did I do that in now everything's just in one, one app I don't have to remember where I saved something so more as I use it more and more more and more of the other apps that I use are dropping off and so I, I literally had an app for everything um, and I've, I've got down to using so few apps now because I use Notion for everything. You know, your example of health information is interesting because I think we've all been there in various forms that, um, you know, I have a lot of my stuff in Apple Notes, but it's all very linear. Yeah. And I'm wondering between the two, I'm looking forward to your notes presentation too, by the way, um, <laughs> that you can, you can sort of work with both and you can overcome the linearity uh, of notes, which you can hashtag as well, but it looks like this is going to be a lot more interactive to say, oh, okay, here's some old health information and notes. Let me move it into Notion and yeah. move it into something. And so kind of build it as you're going along and have it, it all very interactive because, you know, if we want to look up something old, it can take a while because you basically have to go top down. Exactly. And you're looking at things in a very linear, I think all you've really got without a database is chronology. So all you can do is scroll through a long list of emails to find that email or a long list of scans that you've got to find the right, the right one. Whereas if you sort things in a database way, you could click on, for example, I don't know, um, a certain part of, of health, I don't know, it could be, um, Say arthritis or something, you know, and then you know, the there you go. Everything that's got arthritis mentioned is there. So it's the it's the tagging and the adding the the um, properties to the data, which is the important part, which you don't get from notes and you won't get from anything else really. Um, it's the ability to actually break information open and create lots of descriptors and things that make it easy to just jump from one place to another but for health document i think that's probably a really great way to start actually by creating a, a, a database um, a health database let's have a look i'm sure there probably already is one um, if we go to make a new page templates health so yeah, this seems to me a big key to the whole ball of wax here you know in terms of <laughs> What is Notion in, 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 in an interactive, non-linear sense? Yeah. Which yeah, is no. difficult to wrap our heads around because most of us think in a linear fashion. Yeah. I mean, no, we're humans, we go A to Z. Opposite of that, isn't it? So this one, it seems um, health center someone's made. I'm going to add it to our Notion. This is being added. Chris. Can I interrupt for a second? Yes, please. Um, did you see that I the 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 first uh, web address that I posted for Brad's notes session was incorrect? Uh, corrected a bit further down in notes. Thanks. Yes, oh, sorry, I, I did. In, in I chat. did see it. In fact, I put the right. note up there. Good. Because I figured sorry if I that. took Studio off, it would work, and it did. So I'll, um, I know there's a few um, things in the chat that I've missed. So in a second, I'll scroll back through and try and answer some of those questions and make comments. Uh, so this has been copied in. So this one is Health Center. And so this has already done a lot of the work for you. It's got a section for your medicines, how what your dosages are, how many pills to take per day, who prescribed it, status. Um, if you go back, your physician is there, all the information. Notes, diagnoses, document, patient info. But all, importantly, they've added these buttons on the left-hand side for you to add a new bit of information. So rather than even starting from zero with the info that you add, they've built a template in the template. 
So if I do a new appointment, I can say this is a knee, a knee scan, and this appointment is on that day, and it's with this doctor that's in my list, Doctor C. That's now automatically added the appointments to my appointment list down here. Um, so the, you the know, these template, these templates look really useful, but they also look incredibly busy. Um, so in other words, can you make the unused stuff sort of go away or? Yeah, if you, you don't know. want that. Yeah, you can, you can delete all the bits that aren't relevant. That's exactly what I do. Um, okay. You just right click on a section that you don't want and delete it. Um, so right click here. Um, or you can just highlight and delete actually. Um, but yeah, it's, everything's editable within within a template. It's not locked. Um, well, this one is locked, too, but if, if you unlock it, you can delete anything you want. And so you can treat it like a Word document in that sense that you can, yeah, just highlight something and get rid of it. So yeah, you might not need half the things that this database gives you and just exactly the bits, like I don't need patient family history, oh. delete that. That what it's giving you is this this front surface, but actually within it is buried lots and lots of databases and behind the scenes um, cables, if you like, connecting all the information together that you don't have to figure out. You just have to use this front page to access all of these different bits of information. And these so are it's, it's sort of in a general sense, the built-in AI, the free AI, is sort of machine learning all of your content as you're putting it in there and ingesting yep. it all so that you can ask basic questions and stuff and get yeah you know. so once you've got enough information in there you'll be able to say oh when's my next appointment with dr joe or whatever it is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can go back and find your appointment you would actually just ask the ai to do the looking for you um, see that's a terrific question because i find with linear stuff i can spend a long time was it in an email, like you said? Was it, you know, is it in notes? Where the heck is it? No. There's also, I mean, one of the, the, the types of people that it really has been helpful for is people with ADHD. So people mm. with ADHD really struggle to organize data and information. And this allows them to, once they've done the initial work of putting together how they want things to be organized, it allows them to be a bit more lazy with their data because they can ask it. They don't have to know or hold everything in their head anymore. And you can almost use it as like a brain that you've offloaded somewhere. Um, and you can lean on it instead of having to remember everything or figure out where everything is. So you're uh, saying a little assist as we get older. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I think it's... Um, I think it doesn't have a demographic and that's the hard part. There is no notion customer to everyone. And so there's so many different levels and types of things that you can do with it. That's why it might come across a little confusing because I can't tell you who it's for because it's for everyone. Um, so yeah, even as, a, as, a, as an older person, I think definitely organizing medicine, even if it's just that, knowing what pills to take when and having it remind you and stuff is that that alone would be a useful thing to do. So you don't have to do all of the things that I've shown you. You can use it as a, on a very basic level. So you can use it just as a document builder that builds documents that you can link between pages. That's literally it. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, looks great. Looks great. Are you reachable through your website? Uh, yeah, for, for basic things, yeah. Super. Indeed any questions i don't mind doing that there's a question from chris hennan uh, is everything stored in the cloud or can you keep it on your machine so everything is stored in the notion um, servers it is encrypted um but yeah at the moment it doesn't work if you don't have an internet connection but they're changing that and i think it's coming in january where they'll have offline mode so you will be able to work with stuff without an internet connection um, but it will still upload stuff to a server. So it will never work fully without a server connection at some point. So it won't ever work as a fully isolated app um, that's local, but it will have an offline mode. So you'll still be able to see your data if you're on a train or something and you don't have a Wi-Fi connection. 
Um, someone's asked if there is an iPad app. Is this more or less the full version? Yeah, the, the, the really nice thing about Notion is the whatever platform you're on, it's exactly the same. So if you're on an iPad or an iPhone, obviously the screen size is different. So data's kind of reordered a bit, but everything remains the same. All the methods, all the, the way that you do things, exactly the same. Um, and it's it's a, a brilliant for that reason. Um, let me scroll back. Yeah, Airtable is, is brilliant, actually. Airtable is another kind of similar. It allows you to do, it's, I would say it's more basic than um, than uh, Notion, but it, it's perhaps a bit more easier to get into. Um, it's obviously more table heavy, um, and it's not used quite as, as ubiquitously. So there aren't as many pre-existing templates, for example, or as many people using it. But Airtable is another one which is actually quite nice to use. I've had a little play with it, but I settled on Notion because there's just so many people using it and so many um, Notion templates that already exist. Um, that was Edwin. I think we're probably there. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And how, oh, how about privacy and security for what's stored in the cloud? It's so, encrypted. Let me let me double check um, what they say. Yeah, it's something we all think about these days with anything in the cloud. It's important, especially if it's going to have um, personal data and health data and that kind of thing. Um, mm -mm. No, we don't want to go deep into that document. Is Notion safe for personal data? Do -do. Conflicting information here. <laughs> Competition. It's the same page. So they do say that they encrypt things. They are a party to GDPR and they're also a party to the US version of GDPR. I forgot what it's called. Um, so I guess it's as trustworthy as the next software platform. <laughs> I've not heard of any breaches other than people accidentally publishing things um, without realizing that they're publishing it to the internet and not to a specific person. So just be very careful when you, if you publish things or share things. Um, but I've not heard of any big data breaches or anything like that. Um, and I get alerts from the ICO when those things happen because of the work that I do. Um, so yeah, I think you probably need to, to dig deeper into what they say about privacy. They've got quite a big page here on on their policies and things. Um, but I'm kind of reassured by the amount of large corporations that are using it. So um, lots of accounting firms are using it and um, basically anything with an HR department uses it uh, that I know of. Uh, all the companies that I work with recently know about Notion. Um, so I think the, yeah, the fact that, that lots of large people with a lot of money to lose <laughs> are using it means they probably trust it and think that it's safe to use. So obviously I can't guarantee any of that stuff, but my gut feeling is that it's fine, safe to use as anything else. 